you very much indeed, and a very good afternoon to you all. Oh, it isn't very good, is it? These are the famous Cornish Dingle Dangle Wands. Now, it's said that the first pair of Dingle Dangle Wands were created by the legendary wizard Merlin at the castle of Tintagel many, many years ago. Of course, these weren't made in Tintagel. These were made in plastic. Now, it's easy to identify the Dingle from the Dangle. The Dingle is the one with the short tassel. The Dangle is the one with the long tassel. If you put the two together, a strange thing happens. If you pull on the dingle, it becomes a dangle, and the dangle becomes a dingle. Similarly, if you pull on the new dingle, it goes back to being a dangle, and the new dangle goes back to being a dingle. Now, there are people with suspicious minds. They think the dingle and the dangle are connected at the ends, but that isn't true. Look, I'll separate the two ends, and even with the two ends separated, if I pull on the dingle, it becomes a dangle, and the dangle becomes a dingle. Now, there are other people, some of them with university educations. They have deduced that the dingle and the dangle are connected at the angle. They think the cord runs up here, down there, across there, and along there. But that isn't true either. Look, I'll separate all four ends. And even with all four ends separated, if I pull on the dingle, it becomes a dangle, and the dangle becomes a dingle, even if I hold them in separate hands. If I pull on the dingle, it becomes a dangle, and the dangle becomes a dingle. Now, very occasionally, this happens. <laughs> and that can be very disconcerting. I know the first time it happened to me, I was quite upset, because up until then, I always thought that my dingle dangles were perfect. <laughs> However, sitting up in bed one night, referring a puncture to a bicycle tire, the solution hit me. And now I always carry with me this bangle, so that whenever my two dingles have become dangles, I get hold of the bangle, I feel a tingle in my ankle, I pull on the bangle, and both dangles become dingles. And that's the final angle on the dingle, dangle, dangle bangle. Thank you very much. Now I have a friend who lives in Durham, and he has an interesting hobby, he collects money. Now he hasn't always collected money, he used to collect antiques. And one day, he was browsing around an antique shop in Durham when he came across this rather unusual box. Well, it wasn't a box at all, really. It was just four sides. It had no top. It had a loose bottom, and the loose bottom had a little hole in it. When he looked inside the box, he was surprised to find a five-pound note. <laughs> then another. And then another. And yes, all it was was four sides with no top and a loose bottom. And the loose bottom had a little hole in it. And yet when he looked inside, he found a five pound note. And then another, and then another. Just then, he heard a little cough, he looked around and the shop assistant was there. He said, can I help you, sir? Well, he said, I'm rather interested in this box, but it's a bit damaged. He said, how much do you want for it? So the man said, well, it's been in the shop, he said, for a little while. Uh, shall we say 15 pounds? So he reached into the box and handed him a five pound note. And then another, and then another. And he took the box home. Well, his wife was waiting for him when he got home. She said, where have you been, Stu? She always called him Stu, short for stupid. He said, I've been in an antique shop in Durham and I found this box. Well, it isn't a box at all, really. It's just four sides. It has no top. It has a loose bottom and the loose bottom has a little hole in it. And yet he said, every time I look inside, I find a five pound note. Then another, and then another. Well, he sat up all night playing around with this box and in the morning he was very tired. He also had a lot of money, which he put into a big sack and took around to the bank. The bank manager was impressed. He said, where did you get all the money from? Well, he said, I was in an antique shop in Durham yesterday and I found this box. Well, it isn't a box at all, really. It's just four sides. It has no top, has a loose bottom, and the loose bottom has a little hole in it. And yet every time I look inside the box, he said, I find a five pound note. Then another. And then another. Well, the bank manager was impressed, but he was also a bit concerned, and he reported the matter to the police. The following day, knock on my friend's door, he opened the door, and there's the constable, resplendent in his uniform. He said, good morning, sir. I understand you're in possession of a remarkable box. May I see it? He said, yes, constable, come inside, take a seat. The constable went inside and sat down. Very quick, quickly stood up again and removed the truncheon from his rear pocket. <laughs> in the meantime, my friend brought the box. He said, this is it. It isn't a box at all, really. It's just four sides. It has no top, has a loose bottom, and the loose bottom has a little hole in it. And yet every time I look inside the box, he said, I find a five pound note. And then another. And then another. Well, the policeman was very impressed. 
He took a few notes and he left. <laughs> he reported the matter to the tax office. The following day, the tax inspector came round. He said, I want to see this box. He said, yes, this is it. It isn't a box. It's just four sides. Has no top. Has a loose bottom. And the loose bottom has a little hole in it. And yet, he said, every time I look inside, I find a five-pound note. And then another. And then another. Tax inspector was impressed. He said, do you think I could borrow the box, sir, for a couple of days? I'd like to show it to my colleagues at the office. He said, yes, you can borrow it, but make sure I get it back, make sure it isn't damaged. So the tax inspector took it away. Very concerned indeed that a contraption like this could ruin the economy. <laughs> Got to his office, locked the door, he examined the box, it was just four sides, had no top, it had a loose bottom, and the loose bottom had a little hole in it. He looked inside the box, but of course he was a tax inspector. He wasn't going to find any money. Just a demand for payment. <laughs> then a reminder. Then the final notice, you know, from the red one. We've all seen it. There were no five pound notes. However, he wasn't satisfied, so he had the box completely destroyed. But not until he'd had an absolute replica made, which he sent back to my friend. My friend got his box back. Had a look at it, he said, it doesn't look quite the same. Maybe he's been polishing it up. Dashed upstairs to the bedroom, locked the door. He examined the box, it was just four sides. Had no top, had a loose bottom. And the loose bottom had a little hole in it. He looked inside the box full of expectations. Because it wasn't the same box. There were no five pound notes. Just a tenner. <laughs> <laughs> then a twenty. <laughs> than a 50. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Right, uh, in conclusion, I'd like to present what I consider to be the absolute ultimate in mental control. I've often been intrigued by the quotation that what the mind of man can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. In other words, if you really believe you can do something, no matter how incredible it may seem, if you believe it, you can do it. And for the purposes of this test, uh, I would like to invite two gentlemen to help me on the floor. Normally I ask for two married gentlemen who have their wives with them in the audience, but that's going to be unlikely, I think, today. But two gentlemen, uh, preferably gentlemen who actually don't know me, that would be... There are one or two of you who do know me, you might think we've been got at beforehand. Any two gentlemen who are not, uh, who are not perceived to be in cahoots. <laughs> there are a few gentlemen here, I'm sure. I promise I'm not going to, you won't come to any harm. A gentleman here, thank you, sir. Big round of applause for this young man. How do you do, sir? Your name is? Mike. Mike, right, Mike. Uh, another gentleman now. One more sporting gentleman. Come on, guys. Yes? Can't get up. Of course you can. <laughs> One. Nigel, if you wish, by all means. Yes, we do, Nigel, but... Uh, I think it's taken long enough. If he'd been in cahoots, he would have been up a bit sooner. I think. <laughs> Big round of applause for Nigel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nigel. Nice to see you. And Mike. Yes, Mike. Right, Mike, is there anything in your coat pockets that you're worried about might damage if it fell out if your coat comes off? No? What do you mean? Nothing you've been concerned about. Is there some. What do you want to pop it on? Pop it on the table there, then it's okay. All right, now then. Here we go. I've got here some little bits of tape. They are, in fact, bits of boot lace. If you'd like to hold up your left thumb, Mike, I'm going to link one piece of tape inside the other. You're watching this, Nigel. Just, just watch for the time being. I'll bring you into it shortly. You're going to enjoy this. Do you know why you're going to enjoy it? I'm going to do it to Mike. <laughs> Oops. Get them all. One on it inside the other. There we go. Right, now I'm going to tie this rather tightly, Mike, around your thumb. All right, you must tell me if it hurts. Won't make any difference, I'm still going to pull it tight, because I don't want it to come under. That's not too painful? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't brought tears to your eyes, no? That's all right then. Okay, there's that one. Now if you put, take your right thumb and put it at right angles across there where mine is, so that I can get my hand in there, a little bit further this way, then I get it below the joint. So I want to get it... I want to make sure they don't come undone, you see, because I'm wrong like that. Here we go. And you're watching, Nigel? Yeah. Okay. That's not too agonizing. No. No? We haven't brought tears to your eyes. No, good. Not yet. No, not to your eyes anyway. There we go. Oops. A 
There we go. That's it. All right. Now, I think you'll agree that when you're tied like that, it's a bit tricky to get your hands apart. Have a little jiggle. Satisfy yourself. Okay. Right, Nigel, it's your turn. Is he still smiling? I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you, Nigel, if you will, to tie my thumbs together. That's it. You're better about that now, don't you? Yes. There we go. In there, tie them together as tightly as you like. Don't be frightened of pulling it tight. No tighter than that. It's really tight, yes? You're a big lad. But that's nice and tight. I shall scream if it hurts, so don't worry. That's it. You've got that one. I put my other thumb in there. Again, get hold. Tie them as tight as you like. Don't be frightened of pulling it tight. <laughs> He's not missing that earlier this time, alright, that's it. It's tied as you yes. can tie I'm tied exactly the way you saw me tied Mike. Yes. And you said, Mike, that when you're tied like that, you can't get your hands apart. No. If you can't get your hands apart, he logically follows, then neither can I. You agree? Yeah. Right. Nigel, I'm going to ask you, if you will, to get hold of the bottom of my coat, to lift it up right above my head and down over my wrists. Okay, right above the top. <coughs> okay. We well, you weren't in the Navy, were you, Nigel? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now then, Mike, you've said you've got nothing in your pockets now. You're worried about it because just your wallet. Uh, well, they're likely to fall out. Can he remove them? Yeah. Yeah. Which bits? Just his car keys. <laughs> just his car keys. Pop them on the table there. And then exactly the same operation on Mike here, if you will. What car is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Right above the top. That's it. Right above, right above, he's already moved from that Up at the top, lift up your arms. Mind you don't take your wig off, that's it. I should talk. That's it, right above the top, down over the wrists. Oh, it that's it, easy down to the wrists. That's it, shake it down to the wrists. Well done. And if you come back the other side, my, Nigel, I want you to get hold of the bottom of my coat. Spread it out, then it doesn't get crushed. Were you ever a bridesmaid? <laughs> On the count of three, I'm going to give it, ask you to give it a gentle tug. Don't put it too hard, you might break my wrist. Are you ready? One, two, three. It's off and my thumbs are still tight as you tie them, exactly as you're tied, and the jacket's off. Now, very often I get a huge round of applause there. <laughs> but, but you're so amazed you can't believe it. Mike, you can do this, but you have to believe it. If you don't believe it, it won't work. All right, face the front so they can all see. I want you to concentrate hard, Mike, and say, I can, I can, I can. And off. And off. And off. And off. And off. And off. He doesn't believe you, so you have to believe this, otherwise it won't work. Now, there's a chair over here, Mike. I'll bring the chair to you. That's it. If you'd like to sit down on that chair, Make yourself comfortable, I'll come back to you shortly. I want you to succeed, but you're not going to until you really believe you can. And you can, if you believe you can. Nigel, if you put my coat down on the back of that chair, pick up the three rings that you see there. Have a good look at them, satisfy yourself they're solid with no splits, cracks or breaks anywhere at all. Okay, you happy about the rings? If you'd like to move a little bit further away from me. Nothing personal, you understand? But I'm going to ask you to throw these rings to me one at a time so that I can catch them. When you throw, throw them edge on, yeah. as though you're rolling them to me, that's it. Not too hard, no. because they are a bit heavy, and if I miss, he's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you're all right, you're happy about the rings? Yes. You're happy about the knots? Yes. And you're happy sitting there, I can see that. Here we go then, the first one. One, two, three. And that's the first one on. And I'm still tied as you tied me, yes? Exactly as you're tied as the first one. Second one. One, two, three. And there's a second one on. I'm still tied just as you are. With the knots that you tied. Third and last one this time. One, two, three. And all three rings are on, and I'm still tied just as you are. With the knots that you tied. All right, now then, convince Mike. Are you ready? One, two, three. There you go. <laughs> Doesn't relax, doesn't believe you. So you have to believe this, otherwise it just doesn't work. Now it's just possible that some of you may think, as I've had a word with Nigel earlier on, perhaps you think that there are some splits in these rings enabling me to do what you've just seen me do. There's a lady sitting there looking rather suspiciously at me. If I, if I bring the rings to you, will you have a look at them on behalf of everybody else? That's it. Get hold of all the rings, that's it. Let's have a look, pass them around. <laughs> 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 Still tied, just as you are, yes. Yeah. Really nice to see you. Mike, I'm a little bit worried about you. Would you like to come and stand up and stand beside me? 
because I really want you to succeed here. Right? Don't further this way. That's it. Lift your arms up there. Now, remember, believe it and say it out loud. I can. I can. I can. I can. I'm still tired just as you are. I can. With the knots that you tie, yes. Let's have a little walk over here, shall we? Otherwise, if I don't show you the knots, you'll never believe that they're really tied. Well, let's walk over this side. We're not coming all the way down there. We'll have a walk over here. There you go. Have a look at that. But don't show you the nuts. You won't believe that they're tight. Let's go back to the microphone, right? That's it. Because uh, otherwise, people will be starting to talk. It's legal now, though, isn't it? Eh? Thank God it's not compulsory. All right. You see, you've done this and you didn't, you didn't realise. Are you ready? Keep perfectly still. Are you ready? One. Two, three. Did that hurt? <laughs> and I'm still tight just as you are with the knots that you tie. Shai, uh, Mike, will you shake the jacket back above your wrist so we just above your wrist so we can see where your thumbs are. On the chair where you've got the rings, Nigel, there are a pair of scissors. If you'd like to take those scissors and then perhaps you'd like to cut Mike free. Be careful with the scissors. They're a bit sharp. That's it. That's it. And then uh, that's it when you don't cut his coat. And then if you wouldn't mind cutting me free as well, cut the other one off as well, there's another one around his thumb. If you wouldn't mind cutting me free as well, Nigel, because the, uh, the police in Blackpool don't like you driving about with your thumbs tied together. <laughs> a bit funny about things like that. If you got that, and then that's it. If you come round the side, then people can see what you're doing. That's it. Be careful with the scissors, because the rabbi wants them back on Saturday. That's it. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> and that, that one as well. Oh, sorry, I'll do that one. Save you cutting my thumb off. It was a bit tight, that wasn't it? Yes. Okay. That's it. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, what about a nice big round of applause for you, Great Sports? Mike, you're a What about Mike? Yes, a big round of applause. Thank you very much for being here. I'll take those things from you. Thank you very much. Perfectly round. Thank you very much. That's lovely. Okay. Don't forget your phone, Mike. Have you got that? There's no Nice try. Oh, well, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. Just before you go, I've got a wish for you all. May you all live as long as you want to, and may you want to as long as you live. Thank you very much indeed, Michael.